This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. It is great to have you here. I am excited to be here. I am recording this on Memorial Day, May 25th. And uh, yeah, so today I thought what I'd like to do is talk about a question that a lot of people got to start asking themselves, drivers. Are you going to go back and drive for Uber and Lyft? It's a big question. And uh, as I've been looking at that question, right, the economy's warming up a little bit. Um, I basically have boiled it down to four questions, four considerations that I have uh, in determining whether I want to go back to being a ride share driver. According to a ride share guy survey, approximately 60% of the drivers stopped driving due to the pandemic. So that's a huge, that's millions of drivers across the United States that have not been driving, which now that the economy is warming up, got to, you know, what are you going to do? So what I'd like to do is uh, share the four questions and uh, hopefully those questions will help you get some clarity uh, around this issue. All right. Yes, that was me sipping on a hot Nespresso, which I just made. So look, I used to drive 60 hours a week. I did that for my first three and a half years. I would get up at 3.15. I'd be showered and shaved and out the door in half an hour. Um, I would get some uh, coffee, get a donut, put gas in my car, um, turn on my apps at four in the morning. Then I'd drive people to the airport. Uh, You know, that would be a lot of the morning rides. Those are great. Not much traffic, fast rides, big rides. Then around six or seven, things picked up. I'd start taking people to work downtown San Francisco. That would go till about 9, 30, 10. Things slowed down at that point. Time to go get my uh, Starbucks vanilla sweet cream cold brew. Work a few more hours. Then I would uh, stop. I would, uh, you know, have some lunch. Sometimes I'd go to the health club and work out, then have lunch. 
if I had some errands to run, then I'd start up again and uh, catch the, uh, you know, the afternoon rush, finish off around, you know, 637. And that's what I did five or six days a week. And I did that for three, three and a half years. Of course, I took a lot of vacation time, but when I was working, that was my schedule. And I loved it. You know, it was so great to uh, make good money. The bonuses were great. I used to, you know, love driving on Highway 280, which is the the highway that goes uh, from San Francisco to San Jose. It's uh, beautiful, just beautiful. Not a lot of buildings. It's mostly trees and hills and lakes and really gorgeous. You know, listening to music. I always had music playing in my car. Played a lot of jazz, a lot of classic rock. It was nice. You'd have great conversations with passengers. You'd learn things. Uh, you could share ideas and get feedback. Just a lot of really, really great stuff about driving. So it's uh, difficult to consider not going back uh, for me uh, because I've had, you know, great experiences. And all of that has led to me, you know, writing articles and making videos and doing this podcast. And, you know, it was a really rich time in my life. Still is in terms of the writing articles and making videos and doing podcasts part of it. So what are the four questions I'm asking myself? Well, the first question is, number one, is it safe? And this remains a uh, you know, largely unanswered question. Um, I'm not a doctor, but I've been paying attention. I do know that people can have the virus, coronavirus, and uh, COVID-19, and not show symptoms for a day or two. So that means anybody who gets in your car could could be a carrier of the virus. So then we look at, well, how do we prevent someone who has the virus from, you know, getting me infected? And that's where the masks come in, right? We can't social distance six feet in the car. So uh, we have to rely on a mask. And the mask seems to be, you know, somewhat effective at prevention. So if somebody gets in my car, they have a mask on. Um, they're breathing into the mask. They shouldn't be spewing, uh, you know, droplets uh, in my space. But masks are not 100% effective. <clears throat> so even if you're both wearing a mask, um, people can still get sick. So there is still a risk. That's uh, basically what I've come to. And there's a risk, one, that I could get it, and two, that if I have it and I don't know about it, I can then infect other people in my life, right? And uh, that's that's a big risk. So is it safe? My answer to that question is not yet. No. Even if, even if I'm wearing a mask and the passenger's wearing a mask and they're in the back seat and I'm in the front seat, um, we're still in a, in a little metal box, you know, sharing air. There's just no way that's not going to happen. And someone's infected air can get into me, uh, mask or no mask. So, no. So that's that's a serious, uh, is it safe? That's a serious no for me um, right off the bat. But let's go to the next, uh, next couple of questions. Number two, what will be the demand for rideshare drivers? Okay. This is a big concern, right? I mean... I, uh, you know, I drive in San Francisco, which is considered one of the best markets, the highest paying markets, and it barely made sense for me to drive um, at, at the end there. Uh, the last time I drove was the first uh, weekend in February, and I drove like uh, three days. Uh, I did like 11 hours a day. I made around 1050 I spent about 100 on gas. I spent about a hundred on, you know, a place to stay because I don't live down there anymore. And, uh, so what did I, you know, I cleared $800 for three days of work. Um, but will the demand be the same? So there's a few factors to consider. First one is there's 38 million people who are uh, now unemployed. I guarantee you a lot of those people are looking at rideshare driving as a way to make money, uh, because they've lost their jobs. It's so simple to become a driver. Uh, if you have a car, it makes it even simpler. You know, you just apply, get your car inspected, 
And even if you don't have a car, it's really easy to get a car, right? So uh, there's going to be, I believe, more drivers than normal. So given the same number of pings, that means there's going to be less ping per driver. That means you're going to have to work more hours to make the same, same money. The other thing to consider is that with all those people who are unemployed, they're not going to be as uh, busy going out to dinners, you know, going to events, uh, spending money on, on Uber. You know, that's kind of a luxury. So I think that will also drive the demand down. The other thing is going to drive the demand down is uh, because of this pandemic, a lot of uh, companies, companies like Facebook and Apple and Twitter and Microsoft, they're embracing this remote work from home model because they need less office space now, which is expensive. So that cuts expenses. And uh, that means there's going to be less people to drive to work, right? Less people to drive to work. So... I just don't see the demand being nearly what it was uh, pre, pre-pandemic. pre All right, let's go to the third question. Are you earning enough on unemployment that you don't need to go back to, to drive? So as I write this, um, I just got approved for the 450 maximum uh, per week plus the 600. So that's 1,050 per week. Um, so... To look at the example I just gave of the last three days that I drove, I made, I cleared $800. If I worked, so that is in three days. So let's say if I worked six days and then I cleared uh, $1,600. So I'm working six days to make $1,600. I am risking my life because I'm in a car. You know, there's uh, the risk of getting into an accident. I'm also putting probably six, 1,500 miles of wear and tear on my car, right? So there's some other, you know, other uh, expenses associated with, with driving that aren't necessarily, you know, in, in the form of dollars. So is it worth it for me to go out and drive 60 hours to clear $1,600 and take on all that risk or... Uh, and, and, we're also got to consider the the health risk, right? Or stay home, collect my one thousand and fifty dollars, have sixty hours of my life available to do something else, to create something else. Well, that's a big question. Now, a lot of you don't work in San Francisco, so the idea of making sixteen hundred dollars isn't even real, right? Uh, if you work your ass off for six days, you may make, you know, $1,000 or $1,200 or $800. Um, and that's that's pre-pandemic. With the demand down, you know, I don't think I could make $1,600 in six days. So it's a very compelling argument to stay home, say it's it's too risky for your health, and therefore you can't go out and drive and uh, and to just live on unemployment. So that's the third consideration, right? Are you earning enough on unemployment that it doesn't make sense for you to go out and uh, take all the risks to make a little bit more money? And the fourth question is, has your plan B become your plan A? So, you know, I emphasize a lot the importance of building a plan B, right? That being a driver is not a full-time gig. It's not your future. Um, The future is very... Uh, dodgy, very tentative, uh, especially with you know self-driving cars coming down the road, and uh, and just the way Uber and Lyft keep uh, denigrating the the pay and and the conditions for the drivers. Right? It's it's just not a you know it's not a solid ground uh, to 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 bet your future on. So you get to work on your plan B. Now, hopefully over the last two to three months, you've started to work on your plan B and gotten it to a point where you can say, this is now my plan A. I don't need to go back to driving because I figured out another way to make money that uh, is safer, is more secure, and that I can enjoy more. So that's the fourth question. Has your plan B become your plan A? Clearly, if it has, then this whole question goes away because you're just going to keep doing what you're doing now, which is your plan B, which has become your plan A. Make sense? 
All right. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, you need to figure out what's really important to you. So not getting people sick, not getting family members sick, super important. Um, not getting into an accident, staying safe, uh, that's really important. How much money can you make driving versus how much money can you make uh, in unemployment, right? And that's going to continue the unemployment uh, the fat unemployment is going to continue till the end of July. And most pundits say that that's going to be extended at least another three months because the country is struggling. The economy has just gotten hammered. And if you just stop and cut people off, it's really going to hurt the economy more. And that's something our president does not want because our president needs a strong economy in order to get reelected. So I would bet that we're going to continue to get more money. All right. My biggest consideration uh, is my ability to be mobile, to travel. So um, if I can't work and travel together, then that is no longer an option for me. So the only time I see that I'm going to be driving is when I uh, have returned from a trip and I just want to go out and drive for a weekend, you know, just for the enjoyment of it. But even then, how much enjoyment is there going to be when I'm wearing a mask? And the passengers got to sit in the back seat. I don't know. Um, if I feel it's health-wise safe, I'll give it a try. I'll go out and spend three days, you know, see San Francisco, see what that city looks like, you know, just uh, talk to people. That sounds like fun to me. But I just can't see it being a full-time gig anymore because I can't, uh, you know, I can't take it on the road, you know. I can't be in, uh, gosh, how long Bay, Vietnam, and be a rideshare driver. You know, that just isn't going to happen. I can't be in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and be a rideshare driver. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to be in Kerala, India, uh, on a houseboat and uh, driving for Uber or Lyft. That's just not going to happen. So that's my big consideration, is uh, what's going to allow me to travel? And clearly, rideshare driving isn't going to do that. So... Um, the sky's not falling, but things will definitely not be the same. Uber and Lyft aren't going anywhere, but I think a lot of new drivers are going to jump in who don't know any better, and they're going to fill in a lot of the, of the gap of drivers like you and me who may not be so excited about going back because the conditions are going to be, I believe, worse than before. So what I've done today is share with you the four questions that I've been asking myself. And I hope you, uh, you know, as you were listening, you started to formulate some answers for yourself so you get some clarity around this issue of, are you going to go back and be a driver? So is it safe, right? Um, what will be the demand for rideshare driving for each driver in your market? Um, are you earning enough on unemployment that it doesn't make sense to go back? And has your plan B become your plan A? All right. All right. I am going to wrap this up. I'm going to say that's a wrap. This one's in the can. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it out there every day. I honor you. I thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Jay Crater, Nomad Jay, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there. <laughs>